got uh, six practices in, just finished up with number six, first one post spring break. Uh, <laughs> liked how they were, uh, liked their attitude today, liked their mentality today. Um, you know, yesterday, we always bring them back in Sunday night, have a meeting, um, feed them, and uh, do a workout on Monday. Got their left workout just to kind of get them back in the routine of things and, you know, get them involved in school. But uh, liked, liked how we uh, liked how we came out there and, and worked. Had a lot of energy, excitement. Uh, played a lot of ball, so... Uh, you know, I thought we did pretty good. <laughs> uh, we'll go Thursday, and then we'll try to double up and go two this weekend uh, just because we missed a couple of practices prior to spring break because the, the, the weather has been awful. Uh, but, uh, had you know, we, in, in six practices, we've had five uh, good opportunities to get out there and practice in cold weather and in wind, and, you know, obviously we're going to have to deal with that. So... So we're, we've used it to our advantage and, and, and got some good work in. Uh, <laughs> look forward to the day that we actually have spring football as opposed to December winter football uh, at some point. You know, we're not obviously not preparing for a game. We're trying to get a lot of good reps in, a lot of good quality reps in, uh, you know, a lot of fundamental work. Uh, and and when, when the weather gets a little bit better, we'll probably be able to keep their attention a little bit more. So. Um, but uh, you know, overall, I think they're they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job in the in uh, you know the whole off season, just uh, listening to what we're asking them to do. And uh, it, 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 we got a long ways to go. I can't tell you the, the how how much each and every position, each and every unit. I uh, can't tell you how much how far we need to go. But it's just where you're at in spring. There's a lot of people across the country that are in the same boat that we are. So that, that's kind of where we're at. I'd open it up to questions and. Focus on some more specifics. Overall assessment through six practices. Then, I mean, are, are you where you'd like to be? Are, are there areas where you're still deficient behind? <laughs> you? Areas where you're further along than you thought you'd be at this point? I, I don't know where we're at. I don't know how good we're going to be. It's a process, you know. And, and you know, obviously, we got to uh, it, with with nine more practices and approximately 19 more days. We. <clears throat> we got to get a lot better, and, and then we got to add another 25 percent of our team to our roster, and we got to go through camp. I, I, you know, I mean, nobody knows how good they're going to be in, in, in from a 2013 win-loss record. And I, I don't know where we're headed. Uh, we just try to wake up and we try to get better every day. That's what spring's all about. So, you know, who knows? As far as uh, the review of Gino, Pro Football Weekly, um, have you been able to read it? Uh, your thoughts on that and, and some of the criticism that was kind of leveled against him in that? I, I don't read Pro Football Weekly, but uh, uh, it, it was it was brought to my attention that a couple people wanted me to comment on it, and I don't comment on stuff like that. You know, I mean, you guys know how I feel about Gino, and. Um, you know, excited to go to New York. I mean, you don't get invited to New, to New York for the NFL draft if you have issues. I think that's pretty safe to say. So excited to be up there with him during that process, and and uh, he'll he'll be a great pro and he'll play for a long time. <clears throat> How are things progressing at the center position? You liking what you see out of those guys? Better, better. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Madsen w was around for a couple of days and, and uh, you know, had, had kind of worked with Pat a little bit with his snaps, which have drastically improved. We had, we had, we had you know, there's, there was only probably 25% of the snaps in the first couple of days that were, that were even fieldable. I mean, it was not good. I mean, what, I mean, what do you expect? You're moving two guys to center that have never played center. So <clears throat> have really improved. Uh, both, both Pat and Orlowski, uh, both, um, uh, they, they're doing some good things. I mean, they've got to go against Shaq and Christian, who are, who are both two very big, capable bodies to play defensive ta uh, nose tackle. So they got their work cut out for them. Uh, but, yeah, pleased with where it's at. Pat went down with the ankle injury. I don't know the severity of it, so he didn't finish practice today. Uh, he's coming off that ankle surgery, you know, that kept him out for six weeks of our first eight weeks of, of uh, uh, off-season conditioning. So... 
Pat was starting to get back into the swing of things, and he went down. I, I hope it's not serious at all. <clears throat> we did have one injury uh, that I report, uh, uh, which is which is a surgery situation, and Adam Pankey, uh, which was incredibly disappointing to see coming off his red shirt year. He, he's got so much upside. He was showing more improvement than any offensive lineman that we had. Uh, big six foot five, three hundred and fifteen pound guy that was moving phenomenally. Uh, had knee surgery, ACL, so he'll, he'll be out. He'll be out till they won't release him till probably September, October. So, you know, that's going to cut into his, his redshirt freshman year. And uh, one other side note from a, from a, <clears throat> from a program standpoint is uh, Corey Harris has been suspended indefinitely for the rest of the semester. Uh, Eggers ankle, is it the same ankle that he had the surgery on? I believe it is. That, that doesn't mean it's... Uh, that doesn't mean it has anything. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, our doctors don't know yet. I mean, it just happens. So I, I do believe it is the same ankle, you know, which he had. <clears throat> he had his ankle cleaned up and was back in six weeks. So ho ho hopefully it's, it's not any worse than that. Dan, I believe Underwood was a guy that people had talked about that he might come in. With, with the importance of that position, and you got two guys that are going in and out, is it definitely theirs, or is that something where he could come in in the summer and if he's good enough? I'm guessing I'm saying you don't want to put this time to, to poor use. I mean, if one of these guys does that, so you go with him the ball, or can Underwood come in and make a push? <clears throat> you know, it, 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 it's recruiting, which means, you know, we, we try to make the best decisions that we possibly can, but you really don't know what you're going to get until they're here practicing. Uh, so we, we thought enough about Stone to recruit him as a center. We knew we were thin at that position. We had no returning center coming back. Uh, you know, the three guys that snapped the ball in, in the fall are all three gone. So, you know, you got to have two, three centers on your team. Uh, <laughs> it's like the quarterback position. If you don't have two or three, you're, you're if you if really if, if you have two, you, you get nervous. So you, you really need to have three guys that can snap anyway. So, you know, we're we're trying to develop two guys we felt good about, add him to the equation, let them all three compete in the fall, and uh, you know make a decision on who's one, two, and three. Is it easier to set the rest of the offensive line once you have a center in place? Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, that, that's, that's the quarterback of the group for sure, but you better have some guys that can protect the edge as well. You know, I mean, all five positions are important. Offensive line is the most important position on your team. Uh, I've said it for years. So uh, you, you got to get a bunch of good, capable guys. <clears throat> Just based on graduation, that's where all our issues are right now. Uh, you got Spain and Fight back that are both playing good. Kendler is a guy that's pushing for a starting job. Being a senior, he's smart. He's he's uh, you know played ball. He's been here. He's he's wanting to wanting to get in the starting rotation. So <clears throat> feel like we got three guys, you know, at tackle that 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 we'll get by with. It's the inside people that are all new. Glowinski's doing good. Uh, he redshirted. He's moving around good. He's got an attitude. He's strong. He's flexible. He's mobile. Um, Marquise Lucas is, is moving better than he ever has. So, um, you know, th th those are guys that have been doing okay. Again, Panky was one of those guards <coughs> that may have been the best one. <coughs> what stood out for you defensively so far? I mean, with, with Coach Patterson getting this time, getting these six practices to get everything installed and, and moving, what's, what's been the bright spot or how's that all going? Well, I, I, I've always loved what he's done defensively. I mean, that, that's, one of, that's the high reason I hired him from a scheme standpoint. Uh, I, you know, there was a couple of different philosophies there last year. That now, you know, obviously there's one voice, there's one scheme, and it's what we want to do. So the continuity of the staff and, 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 and what we're doing schematically and everybody being on the same page, you see a lot of people that are in position to make plays. You know, plus, you know, that and the 10, 12 freshmen that we played with last year are older and they're a little bigger, faster, and stronger, and they're a little, they're a little bit more game ready. You know, what, uh, when you look back on last year, what did, you, what did you learn from last year and how have you approached it in the spring <coughs> and changed it? That we're not a whole lot different than the rest of the people in the Big 12. I mean, you know, there's nine bowl teams in the Big 12, and seven of them were seven and five. <clears throat> so the reality of the situation is, 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 
you know, we're, we're, we're in a conference that has a whole lot of parity and that, you know, you, you better, you better, everybody needs to understand that, you know, and what I mean by everybody is, is, is all the coaches, you know, going through it, our players are going to understand it a little bit more. Um, you know, we, we, we have to be incredibly comfortable with all three of our schemes, which we are, <coughs> and we got to coach them at a high level and we got to demand that, that our team, uh, you know, buys into what we're saying. And, and uh, you know, ha we have a program full of, of guys that, you know, are ready to step up and play when they're ready to step up and play. So, um, you know, I, 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 I like what I like our staff right now. I like our staff cohesion. I like what we're doing on all three sides. I like the fact that the players are buying in. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to win any games. It means, you know, everybody needs to understand what the challenges are and, and, and not take anything for granted. <clears throat> when you were talking about hiring G1 before, you mentioned you know the guy in South Florida, right? Um, Lonnie does really well in Georgia. It, was that an area you were looking to get into? Did that I don't know, tip the scale in his favor at all? Was that just an area you guys are interested in, or is that just something because you have him that's where you can go now? Well, you, you know, in hiring guys, I think you can tell uh, the guys that I've hired, it's, it's a combination of. <clears throat> you know, want, wanting to be in West Virginia, you know, that you can get a better quality coach because people want to live here. You know, a lot of guys that have ties to here want to come back. They'll leave good jobs to come back uh, to, to, to West Virginia because it's a great place to live. And, you know, I think probably a little bit even more so when you've either lived here or your spouse has lived here um, from a family situation. Raising kids here is great. Um, slash being the best fit from a position coach <clears throat> slash being a being a great recruiter you know so you take all three of those things and you you know you come up with the great the, the best guy to hire and I think we I think we accomplished that with all five of these hires so um, you know from a recruiting standpoint you know it's it's an added bonus that J one's really good in recruiting South Florida you know because so, he, he met all three of the criterias that I was looking for uh, same with Lonnie you know, same with Lonnie. Lonnie's he's a great receiver coach, and you know they they, they love it here. You know, and, and uh, the fact that he I mean he he I've seen him recruit South Florida, I've seen him recruit Baltimore, and I've seen him recruit the Georgia North Carolina area. So he can go up and down the East Coast, but you can't do it all. You can't go from Baltimore to South Florida. So I needed another guy uh, that could help him do that. <clears throat> Dave, if you talk about Dreamius and Wendell and, and how they're pushing Bowie and Garrison, have you been able to see some of that competition going forward? It, it's just nice to have four good, capable bodies. It's the first time since I've been here that we have four good, capable bodies. <laughs> you know, and they, they're, they're all a little bit different. So it's going to take a lot of time before we can, you know, you know develop any kind of depth chart whatsoever. Uh, there's no sense in a depth chart right now. With nine more practices, we're going to continue to find out what each and every one of them do well. <laughs> so, but but it, you know they all bring something different to the table. Um, you know, Dreamius is a power runner that's got good open field speed, hits it quick, it's tough. Um, you know, Wendell's a quick-footed slasher. You know that that win, and he doesn't see it. He's young, and he hasn't played a whole lot of football, so he's. He's not as seasoned as the rest of them at hitting the hole the way the way he will once he once he actually sees it. But once he does see it, he can get through there pretty quick. He's got good speed. He's going to be a big kid. Um, so it, it, it's just that's going to be a fun battle to watch. Um, you know, and a, a, as we know, you're going to end up using them all in one way or another. <clears throat> Was there anything different between? Today's practice and, and the last practice before break, as far as you guys moving, I don't know, players up and down, doing things different, whether it's adding or thinning out. The last practice before break, yeah, like a week to think yeah, about. Yeah, same one, identical, okay. identical. What, well, well, <laughs> you know, we go through the script three times, you know, really both offensively and defensively, assess where we're at, and then go through it again. Add situations. We'll add more situations as we get going through camp. Uh, but coming back, we're gonna we're gonna have to repeat everything and you know freshen up on it before we actually uh, you know put in a good bit of situations and start scrimmaging.
I wouldn't <clears throat> I wouldn't anticipate a scrimmage probably until you know maybe one or two of the final five practices. If we scrape, it wouldn't look very good if we scrimmaged right now. It's it's more fundamentals, teaching, learning how to line up, learning how to execute plays. That that comes with more more snaps. Whose stock has risen? I mean, I know it's early and you haven't had a, a ton of time to look at him, but who has impressed you so far? And, and who are some guys who maybe showed you something you weren't expecting so far? Uh, I, the, the guys defensively that stand out is Cook and Cook and Joseph. Those guys, you know, obviously are returning starters. They've played a bunch. They have a, a lot of ability. Uh, Cook looks totally different than he did a year ago. Uh, like like what we're seeing out of him, Carl Joseph's. You know, you, you guys have seen him, but he's had a great off season. He's bigger. He's faster. He's stronger. He's more comfortable in the system. Those, those guys look good. Isaiah Bruce and Quitakowski both look good. So the the middle stuff looks good. Uh, Will Clark had a good day today. Uh, he, you guys saw the Oklahoma stuff. He was dominating in that drill. <coughs> we couldn't block him. And you know, Shaq's just a big dude that's going to take on two, three blockers and hold his gaps. And 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 from a leadership standpoint, real pleased with what he's doing. Um, you know, offensively, we're just we're so inexperienced. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't I don't know where to start. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of guys that will make a play and then make a mistake. You say Cook's uh, a lot different than he was last year. What what are the changes you've seen out of him from, from then to now? Uh, just a commitment level and uh, leadership level. And <clears throat> he, he's far from having things figured out, but uh, he's not limping around and he's he's not making excuses and he's he's in better shape. He took off season more serious. Uh, um, you know, he's he's it, 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 a lot of the, a lot of the guys' lights turn on when they become seniors as well. So, um, you know, so far so good. Don't print too many good things about him because then he'll think he's got things figured out, which he's far from that. You mentioned the Oklahoma drill. Can you just kind of describe the intensity and the one-on-one -on -one battles that go on in there? And, and the guys really obviously get after it in that drill. I mean, how much uh, how much you guys take away from that when you watch the film? <coughs> Do the players realize they're being watched in that one? Well, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's one on one. You know, when, it, when it's 11 on 11, you know, your, your eyes are everywhere. Even with film, you got to rewind it 10 times before you see everybody. So <clears throat> it's just an intensity level that, 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 you know, and again, you're coming off a of break, so they're fresh and they're energized, and you guys had cameras on them and, and all that stuff. So. It, it, I thought the energy was good, and that, that carried on throughout the all of practice, too, so I was excited about that. And We're going to have to get out there with effort and enthusiasm for nine more days in order to close spring out the way we want to close spring out. And then we move on to the next phase, which is voluntary, you know, uh, basically voluntary weight room workouts for a couple of months prior to camp. And going back to the question I asked earlier, about, about last year and what you learned from it. I mean, obviously, how did, how did it affect you personally, especially the defensive aspect of it? You've been an offensive coach your, you know, pretty much your whole career. How did that enlighten you, maybe, or whatever? Well, it's hard to play defense in the Big 12, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's... It, it, and it's hard. It's hard to win. It's a good conference. I mean, I'm I'm not making excuses. I mean, we you know, there's a lot of games with, in particular, you know, two of them that we should have won. You know, but <clears throat> it's it's just it's hard to win. It's, college football is very competitive. The Big Twelve is very competitive. Uh, you, you you must pay attention to detail on all three sides of the ball. Yeah, you must have a group of of guys that are gonna play play and act discipline. You know, not only. On the football field, but in but in life in general, <laughs> you know, because you're you're going up against a bunch of people that are that are that are good teams and well coached and good facilities and winning traditions and all that stuff. So, what are you going to do a little bit different and a little bit a little bit extra in order to uh, be able to win? Because it's hard to win. So, um, you know, uh, defensively, same thing as as offensively. I mean, it's. You know, you got you got to uh, you got to pay attention. And you gotta you gotta get better every every day. Can't think you ever have the things figured out.